Hi, and welcome to today's event where we have the pleasure to present our audiences. To help us through today's presentation, we are joined by CEO Steen Thuesen. We had scheduled this to take the full year report today, but uh, you postponed it. Uh, so, but I think it's still important. And what we would have talked about anyway is the is the large amount of news flow you you have uh, announced since you 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 put out this message about the strategic direction of capitalization. So, we think it's still very valuable for for investors to 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 listen to what has happened and 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 and, and what direction you see the company in in general. And then the third of 30th of May, we also had the Q1. So uh, so that's what we will do in the call today. Um, as always, you can ask questions uh, during the presentation in the box down below. Uh, do it in Danish and English. I will try to translate to the best of my ability. We do this in English today because you also uh, listed in Sweden. Uh, but for now, I'll hand the call over to you, Sting. Yeah. Well, thank you, Michael. And uh, thank you to everyone who listens in. It's been a while since we have had the opportunity to uh, to go out here and, and, and address you. Um, and as Michael said, today we had actually planned uh, originally to publish our annual report. We made a decision um, a few days ago uh, to postpone this uh, until June uh, because we are, of course, uh, operating according to uh, a plan for the kind of future direction and capitalization of the company. And we think this is uh, the right thing to do uh, at this given time. So what we will focus on today really is the state of our business and what we have uh, basically been uh, kind of accomplishing in, in, in the last couple of months and, uh, of course, where we are focusing on uh, going forward. So this is the, this is the outline, so let's uh, jump into it. Um, of course, today um, we are sort of uh, well into, into 23, but just looking back at sort of like what actually transpired during last year, and I think it's just worth bearing in mind that it is just about a year ago since we actually started to take the initial orders for our initial product uh, then in the version 1.0. And as we sort of moved through the year, of course, we started to also introduce the companion, which is this sort of sister device aimed for global consumer electronics markets, uh, building on the same hardware platform and the software platform, but with some differences to cater for different markets. And of course, we also made this significant change in our operatings uh, as a listed company. We moved to the Spotlight Stock Exchange. So last year was really, you can say, uh, full of, of quite major event from us. And at the same time, of course, we had the whole turmoil in the markets around the war in Ukraine and, and investor sentiment. And of course, it made it difficult for us to carry out um, the financing of the company as we had expected. So we ended up at the end of the year, carrying out a smaller rights issue than we had originally anticipated and also announced earlier in the year. So this is, you can say, the backdrop to where we are today and to some extent also the situation that we are in right now as a company. Um, I would say on the, on the very positive side, we have this year already completed a major milestone. We have completed the development of a version 2.0 platform release, which is a major enhancement to our product, both the VEN and also the companion product. For VEN in India, it addresses, uh, you can say, a big issue we have had with kind of lack of um, amplification for the type of customers that really find our product interesting. So we are now in the process of really rolling that out in, in the channels. It can already be downloaded today from the App Store and uh, for, for iOS and for Android. Um, and of course, we have been also bringing it out more publicly um, in Barcelona and also in different other events since then. But getting back to the sort of funding, so we did this right issue in December and we had a, a follow-up process uh, called uh, the TO1, which basically is, is trading options or, or warrants um, essentially associated with the shares that were uh, bought by uh, shareholders in, in December. And that period uh, ran in, in, in late March to mid-April. July, uh, mid, mid -April. And it yielded, unfortunately, much less proceeds than we had anticipated. So only around 600,000 Danish kroner. And we had expected more in the, in the direction of, of, of millions, uh, maybe even 10 millions uh, at a theoretical max. But it means that we are in the process of looking at other ways of financing the company. And also we are evaluating other ways of, you can say, partnering to achieve our long-term aim, of course, is to help millions of people with 
with poor hearing. So to do that, we were also through this process earlier in, 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 in the first quarter where we set a new board where uh, me uh, as a CEO and also our founder and CTO has joined the board of directors together with two industry um, persons with, you can say, normally located in, in Japan and Brazil respectively. So it means that we have set a new board to really drive this um, process home and also help us expand into new markets around the world. This is really what has happened overall in audiences and from a big picture point of view already this year. What we have announced also, of course, and been quite open about is that we have had some challenges in the Indian market in terms of the product market fit. The version one we brought out last year turned out not to be able to amplify as much as some of the people that were looking for our solution really needed. <clears throat> I would say probably the predominantly the number of people that found our product really interesting, they had much severe hearing than we had actually made the product to address. So we have been back, you can say at the drawing table, really trying to understand what are these issues that we are experiencing in the market. And we devised this 2.0 platform development project that we have now brought to market. But this understanding the problem and doing something about it is what has really been a major focus area in our R&D team. And I'm really pleased to say that what we have brought out now as this version, and we're actually doing a, a, an enhancement release uh, in a few kind of weeks time um, with some further improved programs uh, that you can say are catering for different listening situations is really a major accomplishment that we are proud of. We think it's gonna change how Vin will behave in India. We have also announced, of course, um, um, a quite important partnership in India with a company called Earcard, which is a, a, it, it, a, it's a quite, it's a younger company, but with a lot of uh, focus on, on developing business in India around hearing health, but from a, a, a quite innovative approach. So they have built up um, in the last couple of years, a sizable network of clinics um, that are associated with their business around 1,270 to be precise, that are essentially benefiting from their lead uh, generation services. So bringing in customers that are basically uh, encouraged to, to buy something in a clinic and then uh, Earcard will actually derive um, kind of a revenue cut from that. But that also includes actually recommending products to buy. So this is why we think there's a very good fit between what Earcard is doing and where they want to go with own clinics. And, and also exploring new channels such as pharmacists and opticians. This is exactly what we have been trying to do and with some success, clearly from, you can say, a relationship point of view, but where our sales to date has not been um, really meeting our own expectations either. But we think this partnership is going to be extremely important to our company and we have agreed, you can say, an, an initial sizable annual commitment um, that we have also announced to the market of, of first year's kind of expected revenue. So we are, I think, on a really good trajectory now with setting up a collaboration with Earcard in India. I'll come back in a, in a few slides here and explain a bit more about what actually is that we're going to do different and what are they going to do going forward. <clears throat> but as you also may have, have seen, we have announced an updated Q4 report and, and kind of for the full year 2020 as well. And, and it's sort of, a, you can say, it's, it's a quite uh, unusual thing to do perhaps, but we have been in a situation with the original Q4 report where we have made a provision for loss on, on debt. So basically customers that have received product from us according to agreement, but not yet paid for them. And that amount, unfortunately, was quite significant by the end of the year. And, and the whole challenge was that there's not been enough sell through of the product to end users. So our different sales partners were essentially withholding payment to us accordingly. <clears throat> not really according to our business terms, but we chose to accept that for a while in order to really give the product time to settle in the channels and build, you can say, the right demand and, and interest in the product. Now we are a number of months further ahead and we have made this exclusive collaboration with Aircar. So we are actually obliged to change our distribution setup and really um, cancel existing agreements and transfer uh, clients uh, to Aircard going forward. So in doing so, we have had really to make a, 
a, a new provision where we say, okay, we have decided now we will seek to take back all unpaid products in the channels and instead have them upgraded to the new version 2.0 software and made available for air card sales the coming years. So this is why we have made this, taken this decision, made this uh, new updated report. And of course, this will be part of the annual report as well when we are publishing that. But essentially, that is, I would say, a major change, of course, but it's also something we felt it's the right thing to do uh, at the given time. And uh, so, so the provision uh, is, is exactly uh, scheduled out with you taking in, in, in stock to goods. So, so, so the profit and loss or, or the, the bottom line is not very much hit by that. Is no. that correct, Steve? That's correct. The beta result is, I think it's like 100,000 changed uh, due to some currency fluctuations and the profit loss for the period is changed around 200,000 partly due to the same and some other factors. So yeah, yeah. It, it's my new change. But of course, the top line for us changes, I would say, um, I would feel much more uh, comfortable right now having the products uh, back on stock and then we can actually sell them um, in our new channel partnership. That I think is, is really important and that's why we, we chose to do that. Yeah. Um, so coming back to sort of, okay, so what is it exactly that we are focusing on beyond India? So as, as everyone knows, we are in India. We've been there for a while. We are in the process of... of, of of course, um, working our way through the regulatory uh, effort to achieve the necessary certifications to also enter other markets with medical devices. That's a key thing to enter, for example, the US OTC market and, of course, uh, also European markets for that sake when you want to sell hearing aids. <clears throat> In India, there is a regulation that has come into effect here that is called MDR, which is an Indian version. It builds on essentially FDA and, 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 and elements of the European uh, regulation as well. So that's what we are focusing on for the coming years, ensuring that we also get that approval so we can start selling the kind of the, the, the coming products as well uh, that will require that uh, legislation uh, passed. Um, can I stop you there, Steve? Yeah. Because there is actually a question, you know, uh, it, it looks like, uh, there's a question, it looks like the, the, the win doesn't uh, live up to the Indian requirements now, as you are mentioning, that is coming new. So how can you build up with EarCard selling online uh, and be a medical device uh, yeah. uh, demanding those uh, ISO uh, approvals? So can you explain a little bit of why we already had expectation for India? while they have made new regulations and uh, which you are maybe first able to comply to in the future. Yeah, so I, I think the, the important thing is that this, this new legislation applies to new products uh, taken into the country and also, of course, new products developed. And, and that's what I'm explaining. That's what we are we're working on. So ensuring that the successor to the event product we have today that will be a medical device will actually meet those legislations, both in, in India, but also... Uh, in the US and in, in Europe. So we'll, we'll, we're taking that, you can say, as the sort of future um, path into these markets. The current products that we have, uh, the VIN 1 and, and, and 2, are, are basically registered in, 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 in India as, a, as a, not as a medical device, but it is under the existing um, guidelines for how hearing aids were essentially brought into the, the market. So that's we have sufficient stock to, uh, to cater for the next couple of years um, uh, product sales uh, we, we, we expect. So I think right now it's, uh, it, it, especially with us taking back the, the products that are, were unpaid in the channels, that helps us in, in that way to build up the necessary stock. So that's part of that, that approach. So to make it clear to everybody, uh, maybe also me, yeah. the, 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 the one you have produced and already brought into India, yeah. you can sell. Uh, new devices uh, will have to have this and, and you will need to live up to that. And when do you expect to, to, to live up to, uh, to the dose regular, uh, be able to do that? Yeah, that's what I'm saying, that we, we expect that during next year, 2024. Okay, during that, next that year. Yeah. And, and, and that kind of it coincides with the efforts we have in um for example, for the FDA uh, approval and, and so forth. So it's, it's really, it's part of the same journey from a regulatory point of view, things we have to master, uh, things we have to get, <coughs> get certified around. So it's part of the same uh, journey in, in that direction. Perfect. So Yeah, a good question. So just to sort of explaining, um, I previously used this uh, model to indicate uh, our go-to-market in India. So I've made sort of a, 
a simplification of this model now. So our role in working with Aircard is, is essentially where Aircard is the market-facing organization. And they will go to market both through their sort of online uh, channels. Um, I expect there will be some kind of presence also on these uh, e-tailer sites in India, uh, Amazon, Flipkart, and so on. But that is really to be decided. Um, but the other channels that we have been developing and are present in are definitely part of what Earcard also is present in today. And then there are some channels that we're going to jointly develop um, further, like pharmacies and opticians and so on. That's what we are looking for as the, you can say, as, as the future way forward as well, broadening the channel. So we have also developed some NGO channels uh, in recent uh, quarters. Uh, and of course, that's we're going to continue to service those. They are really interesting because they are working with people, you can say, at the who are in, in really severe need for, for good hearing solutions. And I think this is exactly what, what Ben also is a good fit for. So this is kind of how it looks, you can say, from a schematic point of view. And there's a question, Steen. Yeah. So yeah. Earcard will also sell to your current distribution channels. Yeah. Uh, the one you already uh, picked up, you, you will uh, hand them them, or you might say, yeah. or, yeah, okay. okay. There, there's, and, some, there's some overlap already, but you, know, you can say now there will be um, maybe more... Um, dealers coming into the, the yeah. net card network and, and then there will be some that are already there. So, yes. And, 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 and have you made some kind of a sorting because uh, I know you were pushed by because they didn't sell through, but I guess yeah. there must also have been some disappointment, you know, they are not pushing any sell through and that was why you had to take so many products back. Yeah. So have you made any fine sorting before leaving a uh, you might say your dealer network to, to ear card to, to maybe have the best performing no, no. I think that this is part of our collaboration that 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 this dealer network will be uh, integrated with that of of Aircard. So, okay. so they will they will be the the customer facing, and also their model is slightly different than you can say than than ours has been. So, it's going to be really interesting to, to see that develop. Um, but but I would say just again to put it simply, we're going to change our internal way of working to be more uh, focusing on what, of course, what we're doing as a manufacturer. So, import logistics. Um, supporting with, with different marketing assets and, of course, handling uh, post-purchase um, kind of warranty claims and, 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 and kind of uh, other aspects around um, return and refurbishment of products. That's what we will continue to do. But then we're going to support Aircard in their effort to develop different channels. And, of course, we'll undertake staff and customer training and education and, and also provide um, level two support, which is, so you can say, the level below the initial call center about supporting channel partners and, and end user uh, challenges. So, and your homepage, uh, I think you had one uh, for the Indian market, audiences on, on yeah. your homepage selling directly. That, that, that will be closed down. That, that is now, we're, 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 going, we're going to wind that page down and uh, we are going to start a really uh, uh, supporting Aircard in, in, in their endeavors in, in that direction. Of course, we have a couple of years experience in, in that space, but now we're, we're going we're gonna to look, look to be, be successful with with your card, and um, what we will, what we will do is is what I call customer fitting, counseling. It that essentially is um, we have some some people that will be present in the homes and stores where we can help, essentially guide people on on how to utilize this product, how to get going with it, and so on, and um, so yeah. So all your sales and distribution part cost uh, people you you have in India is is kind of uh, will will be uh, terminated in the future. Not terminated is a wrong word, but no, no. that that will uh, that will go over. You will only have the support function trying to you know bring out this uh, hearing aid yeah. to the market. Is that well, correctly well, understood? Well, well, actually, our, our you can say our our sales executives will, will become more account managers, so they will be doing what they're doing really well, and that is to, to be present in, in the channels and helping them understand the product and support their sales. But, um, but right now, you can say we have a quite small team, and I think that that's going to remain as is. But, um, but you know, time, time will tell what, what we're going to do. But right now, I think the key is support this transition successfully and uh, be a, a good partner. So um, maybe just advancing, I can see we are sort of, you know, on, on time now, around 20 minutes, but um, our portfolio consists of two products. And of course, we talked a lot about VIN. Uh, talk about Companion, you know, we have been starting to sell this in uh, in channels, really 
predominantly in, in Denmark and in Sweden. So we have a, a Swedish partner called Airstore who are selling it uh, primarily online. And uh, we are gaining the initial experience on that and uh, launching, a, you can say, different campaigns to drive sales of that. And uh, I think this is early days, but it seems to be well received. And I do believe with the version 2 upgrade, uh, it'll be, you can say, even a, a more attractive proposition as well. This is the product, though, that we are planning to launch in other markets this year and, and, and most notably in, in Japan and in the U.S. And then I think we're going to take other markets as they come uh, one by one, really, uh, in terms of opportunities. Um, the two products we have, uh, you can say I, I mentioned that earlier, they are physically um, the same. Uh, Software-wise, slightly, uh, you can say, uh, slight changes, but otherwise building on the same software platform. So all the goodness we brought into when uh, the companion product is also benefiting from that. Channels, there is some, you can say, overlap, but otherwise we have in mind with companions more kind of the, the, the new over-the-counter channels like pharmacies, opticians, electronic stores, and, and definitely also online. So this is what we are, we are, we are focusing on um, kind of rolling out in now. So the sort of final slide, um, you know, still Orientis is, uh, is on our way forward, I, I believe, in an actually quite interesting direction. We are, we are fixing some challenges we knew we had, uh, or that we have learned that we have had, and we are trying to put together a new platform for moving forward in, uh, in the key markets that I've outlined. And I think it's a, as an investment case, uh, it has all the hallmarks as we have previously discussed. And we are really seeking to deliver on, on each of those uh, the coming months. Um, for the, you can say for the sake of the, the sort of calendar um, that we are now working according to, we will be providing more detail on first quarter already in a couple of weeks with our Q1 reporting. When we have been that, uh, you can say publish that, then a few weeks after, we will come with our annual report. Um, and of course, this is what we postponed as from, uh, from today. And then we'll have our annual general meeting uh, at the end of June. And then going forward, we'll have sort of the, the, the Q2 half year reporting and the Q3 reporting later on in the second half. So I think this is what I had prepared for today. And I hope this was satisfactory and, and enlightening. So uh, I look forward to take further questions. Uh, thank you very much for your time. Perfect. Uh, there's a question here. How does it go with the sale of Companion in Europe? Are we talking about hundreds or thousands? Uh, not, of, not, uh, unfortunately, not thousands yet. And I don't think we are up at, at hundreds yet, but I think it's moving in the right direction and, and gaining. we're sort of gaining understanding of where the product um, seems to be a good fit for again the initial learning so so i would say it, it's it's moderate but in, encouraging and and certainly that that we can see there are people here that finds this type of product interesting i think it's worth bearing in mind that that um, in denmark and in sweden there is actually a social security system in place where people can get hearing aids um more or less free so our product is something that you can buy uh, in retail if you want to. So it's, it's a voluntary purchase. So we're trying to address those segments that are not really benefiting from the types of hearing aid you can get via the sort of social security system or the welfare uh, services. So this is, um, this is you can say, uh, uh, not a toe in the water, but it's something we're trying to sort of learn from as quickly as we can. And then we're going to deploy it, uh, hopefully on, on a broader scale. And there's a question here, which effect have uh, VIN 2.0 had on, on, on the sale? Or, uh, or is, is it not that important in Europe uh, because there no. you are more targeting the... the, the no, I think the, 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 the not yet, uh, I would say, any major impact. I think the product has become much better, as I said, but it was pretty good as companion with the amplification that, that it's intended to give. Um, so right now, I would say no, no, no sort of... Uh, revolutionary impact so far, but I think it's just going to make the whole package much better going forward. Then there's a question here. What profit is left for you when Earcard is doing all the selling? What? Profit. Profit. Okay. Of the course margins, you... the profit. Yeah. I guess you had a higher margin when you that also is... did the, the, the is... selling in, in That India, is correct. So... But, but, but we also had the obligation and you, to, to invest in, in marketing and, and, of course, sales activities. And, and this is changing. 
So of course our our you can say our margin structure is not the same, but um, we also have you can say one customer to service uh, and and uh, and and focus on them. So it's a it's a chain setup. Um, so there that, there's a, should be ample profit for us to uh, to to do a good job and and make a good business. There's a question here: Is there any risk that Earcard will end out, uh, or, or sorry, and and all this uh, deal you already made be, because of the, the that you have postponed your, uh, your 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 yearly reporting? Can, can you talk a, a little bit about uh, what what are the risks that that, that Earcard, which 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 will make you break, and what can make them break, uh, and 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 this about the. Sure. The, the postponement of the, the the yearly reporting. I don't think there's anything to 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 do with that agreement uh, as such. I think uh, this is a collaboration based on a, a mutual set of objectives that we have signed up to. Uh, you can say to accomplish together, and with with sort of clear responsibilities as well. So I think uh, this is what we will be focusing on on delivering on. So um, I think that's that's not related to our decision to uh, to push the the annual report a bit. Do you expect to enter the U.S. market with a partner strategy? And I, I'm, I'm thinking yeah. about Europe. You know, you are capital restrained. Uh, there's, yeah. Let's put it like it is. Uh, and 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 this is a mod, le, mos, much less capital uh, <laughs> intensive uh, way of going to market. You are the producer. You you, you use this knowledge. You and and then. So is, is there any thinking on using the same? And is there possibilities of that? No, exactly. I think uh, that that is how we are looking to go to market in the U.S. Uh, So definitely a, a partner-led approach, uh, like like with Aircard, for example. But uh, something along those lines is definitely attractive. Um, I, I would say, as a manufacturer looking to enter the U.S. with an FDA kind of registered or approved device, it is also important to to have a presence there. But but I think from a go-to-market point of view, the Aircard model has certainly has got some 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 good elements to it. If you think about from a conceptual model, so that that's what we are. What we believe is is the right thing to do it, uh, not just in the U.S. but it also in, in in other markets. Perfect. And that's a question. I went to a hearing center in Dar es Salaam, Tanzania, with yeah. uh, went to investigate. The specialists were interested in selling it. They were not interested as they already have other hearing aids with auto adjustable system at the yeah. same price. Can you tell about the SWOT analysis you have made of the industry competitors with with similar products and and how you are going to to place your your, your market there or product? In, uh, in in Tanzania or just in in, in general? I, I think in general, yeah, yeah, okay. but I think in Tanzania, you know, it, it is must yeah. be some lid where where you are hitting, like in India, you know, it, it, it's yeah. uh, you know for it, it, it's an emerging market, so I, I guess yeah. you should see it as this the, the, the question there. So the SWOT yeah. analysis, uh, you you have competitors. How are you going to mm. to to counter that in, in the market? Yeah, of, of course, there is competitors, but our focus has always been to make a, a self fitting experience uh, at an attractive price that has always been our our aim and then to find the right channels the right customers for that and i think we we have found some good channels for that in our in our go to market in india i think we have seen interest from not just you can say the professional clinics but also from pharmacies and and and, and opticians and so on ngos so i think this is about finding the right kind of solution to address the the needs that customers have And some wants invisible products, others wants products that are, you can say, looks like something that is not stigmatizing. And that, again, has been our aim. So our SWOT analysis has really been around understanding, you can say, what is currently on offer in the market, um, what are the people's needs, and how do we kind of make something that, that you can say, addresses those while not exactly ending up in the red ocean. And that's, I think... Um, Is, is probably the, the simplest answer I can give. Then there's a question. So if if when uh, succeeds your expectations in India, the, then they can't import anymore. Uh, so it, it's a it's a huge problem. So so how big is your stock? Uh, you said that you kind of uh, mm. expected it to last uh, through that you have the new. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, But, uh, of course, the, 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 we are, we are not standing still either, and and uh, and and I think the. The activities we have been been going on to create, you can say, the, the version that will become approved is is going to go into market at the time where where we sort of are, are, you can say have sold all the existing stock. We have quite 
significant amounts in in India right now. So I, I think it's not a problem that we are we are foreseeing uh, that will become an obstacle in our growth there. And, and can you mention around the size of that stock? You know, so so no, people I, can get I, a feel, I, or is that a secret? That is a, that is our secret. Yeah, yeah, but you can you can also guess from the from the sort of decision that we have made recently to uh, to you can say take back unsold products from the existing channels. It means that we have got you can say we have more than 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 we than we had previously. Uh, so so we we're in a pretty good shape in that in that sense. So if you go back and see your announcements on how much you produced, you maybe can make a guess. But it's a secret. It's okay. Uh, to get a wing uh, approved in the new uh, demand in mm. India, what what is uh, demanded of you and what is demanded of of the product, the, the wing? So, well, so is it is it, it the product that needs to be changed, or is it uh, your need to do the? I have seen the procedure around forty steps or something like that to have a medical it, device. It, uh, it's a, it's essentially uh, it is essentially a process that are leveraging what other manufacturers would do in 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 the say the U.S. or in Europe, and then uh, it, you have to sort of get the local Indian approval. So it's the it's the quality assurance and it's the manufacturing and it's the you can say the product specifics. So and and this is of course uh, what is understood and 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 required uh, most places. India. Is, so so so, yeah. so I, I I put it up. I I I, I have, unfortunately have a little bit of boring noise with this. It's it's a very long process that you need to fill up and start doing all that writing the first paper yeah. and and everything. But it's actually not the product that needs to be very much changed. It, 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 is that correctly understood? That, uh, yes, for, for, fundamentally. But but I would also say when we have developed a product and launched that. Last year, of course, uh, there will be improvements made uh, based on all the learnings. And, and, and so you can say the product that will be entering the market at that stage is not exactly the same as we have today. We have also communicated that that it's going to be a version of the product that is, that is kind of optimized to suit that, you can say, set of requirements. So maybe simplified in some ways, maybe looking differently. Um, that, that is, you can say, that is... That is the you can say that the benefit of of getting learning that you can actually decide to do things differently in the future. Um, there's also the other option of of manufacturing products in India, of course, uh, where you can say you are you are you're getting into the market as a as a local uh, partner. So we we are essentially these different things is something that we are looking at all the time um, and have been doing so. And this journey to to getting the quality approvals is of course what we have been working on since. Since you can say even the beginning of, of last year, we, we were working on that. So it's it's something that um, that that we have been investing significant time and resources in already. Perfect. Thank you, Steen. I think we went through all the the questions and and you took us through uh, the news flow. So uh, yeah. thank you to everybody and may everybody have a nice uh, long holiday if you are a Danish person and uh, and thank you to you, Steen, for taking us through your your company. Yeah. And thank you for your time.